Okay, this is going to be a little bit less of a how-to video, but more of a this is how I did it video. Uh, basically, my batteries are going to be in series, so I'm going to have a, a 20 volt, 20 volt, 20 volt in series to give me my 60 volts. Um, what I need to do is I need to be able to monitor those batteries and make sure and give me a gauge of how much power I have left. Uh, a good uh, way to do that is by voltage. I'm going to have uh, one voltage gauge per per battery cell. So it'll read 20 volts at 20 volts at uh, full charge and then about 16 volts when dead. So that gives me a so I can kind of slowly see my voltage drop as I'm riding the bike. So that's where these come in. These are just a 12 volt um, battery uh, voltage gauge and these will work with 20 volts. Uh, they are pretty simple. They just have a uh, just self-powered positive negative and they're good to go. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these apart and if you get some goof off this stuff will eat through plastic. It would also eat through paint but sometimes it'll only eat through the paint and sometimes it only eats through the plastic but on this plastic it's um, it's okay and it, I was able to uh, rub off the uh, the uh, text here. So I'm going to take the text off and so it'll just be all black. Now when my batteries get down to 16 volts I get down to that dangerous zone where I'm start starting to be getting real close to damaging cells and you, you can damage a cell at about 3 volts. When a battery is, is fully charged each cell is going to be about 4 volts when it gets down to 3.6, that's when it's in its happy zone. That's when it does uh, most of its energy curve. And then once it gets down to about 3.3, you really want to stop using that cell because you're at the borderline of damaging that. And what's great about this is this is a remote control car uh, LiPo uh, voltage alarm. And what this does is you plug in each, each you got a negative here, and they have all your positives for every single cell. And what this will do is once any one of your cells drops down to 3.3 volts, it will flash with LEDs and it will alarm on you. And uh, what I've done is I've converted, it came with a ton of these, well I had one, one green and one red per, per cell. And so it's fairly simple. All I did was um, re rewire these, and it turns out that this whole bank is all negative, and then this entire bank is all positive. So I just went ahead and saved myself some trouble. But so that whole top row is all a positive, and that whole bottom row is all a negative, and then you have your in betweens, which is where it separates the signal and gives you your positive or your negative for each LED. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have this as my um, alarm gauge. I'm not going to have a battery management system on this uh, bike. I feel like it's a little, little overkill, and I've had bad experience with those uh, failing out in the middle of nowhere. So um, I'm going to just go with alarms, and I feel like that's that gives me, me the control to say, okay, I can shut off this bike, and I can just pedal from here on. Um, I don't think I need to have it self-balance through the... Uh, inside entire range of, of biking. I feel like the DeWalt batteries are pretty good and they should be uh, stable by themselves. So what I have is the uh, gauges for voltage. That'll give me a gauge of how uh, much power I have left. And then I have my alarm gauges and this is a uh, modified version. This is a USB adapter for a motorcycle or a car and it gives just standard 12 volts. Uh, I didn't use that at all. Here is the inside. It's a simple positive negative and it's a 5 USB is just 5 volts. So it gives it's a uh, 12 volt to 5 volt converter and it's got a little LED here that shows that it's on. Uh, fairly simple. What I did was I chopped it off and I can show you the before and after. Um, but see, I just I cut out that this middle section right here, made it a nice little square, and uh, I was able to uh, snap that in there. And so I stuck it in there right where I wanted, and then I just poured a bunch of hot glue in there, and that should be uh, should be just good. This little 
place where the LED was is now not doing anything, but it's that's okay. Um, uh, next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to mount this so that this is hot glued in here, and that will be held like that. And then I have my original screw cap. I can do whatever size hole I need to do for that, and then my my nut comes on like this, and I bolt it on in the exact same way that my uh, voltage gauge is. So on the bike, I'll have uh, three, three gauges like that, and three gauges like that. So I'll have three here and three here. So it should look, should look pretty cool. This is kind of the what I had to do to modify it to get it to fit. I had to sand off some of this off one of the uh, banks of LEDs and I had to cut off some of the top tab over here. Uh, other than that, and then I rounded off, since it's going into a round hole, I had to shave off a little bit on all these four corners, but hot glued together, soldered together, just jumpered from the main board, uh, and then it, it does work. Uh, I have a DeWalt battery right here. I have this uh, pigtail to the actual yeah, individual cells, and it's a fairly simple setup of uh, if I can get this in here with one hand, uh, it just pops it in there. And it's, well, it says it's okay. But so it uh, does So that battery's almost dead. So it's alarming. Let's try, let's try this one right here. So I think that battery was actually almost dead. So that should be doing, that gives you an idea of what it does when it says, oh, cells. So there's a brand new cell. There's a brand new battery. So we're good on that one. And, uh, just start again. Pretty cool. I like it. Uh, well, uh, thanks for watching.